Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install and set up the Trello plugin. This is a free plugin that I've created for the Bubble community. If you use Trello, uh, which is a great uh, project management type of platform, then this plugin will let your app communicate with your Trello account. You can do a number of different things. Um, you can create boards, cards, lists, team members. You can also retrieve all of that information from your Trello account. And um, the setup just takes a, a few steps. So I'm gonna walk you through those right now and uh, show you a couple examples of how to actually display your Trello information um, in your application and also trigger things to happen in Trello from your app. So if I go to my editor here, uh, you'll want to install the, uh, the plugin by going to your plugin section over here and then add plugins if you don't already have it installed, look up Trello and uh, hit that install button and you'll see it show up here. And you have a handful of fields for um, setup. This is just kind of the way the API works with Trello, but I'm gonna take you through uh, so you know what to do. It's actually a lot simpler than it looks. You don't have to have, these aren't completely separate values for every single field. Um, at the very bottom, I just want to point out all the different things that you can do with this plugin. So as far as data calls go, you can retrieve teams, boards, members, lists, and then cards within a list. And then as far as actions go, you can create all of that stuff um, aside from team members, uh, but you can create teams, boards, lists, and cards from your bubble application. Okay. So if we look at the settings here, we can see that for every action or data call, so for example, get team, get boards, create team, there are two fields. So for get team, we have token and then get team key, and then it just kind of repeats. So we have the token and key for every uh, call. You need to retrieve your token and key from the Trello developer site. Now, if you go to the plugin page here for the plugin, it'll open up this info page that we see here. And um, first of all, you can open up the plugin code if you're um, interested in learning about how the what the API connections actually are. You can certainly do that. This is an open source plugin, so you can click on that to open it up. Uh, but if you scroll down a little bit, there are instructions for how to get your key and your token. So the first thing is you'll is you'll want to get the key. So here's the link trello.com forward slash app key that will take you to this page here. So as you can see at the top of my page, I have my uh, API key. Now I've already generated my key so I can immediately copy this and um, I'm going to paste it into my settings there. If you do not see this automatically, you probably see a button that says to generate the key um, for the first time. So go ahead and do that grab your key and then come back into your editor settings and paste that value anywhere you see a key field. So you have two, remember token and key, just paste this into the key field. Um, I would go ahead and just do it for all of the fields that say key. So you don't have to come back in here and check if you're just doing one or two calls, just go ahead and do them for all of them. Um, and then you really only need to do them for the live Fields. If you notice below all those live fields, you have a duplicate set for all of the development fields. You do not have separate keys for live and um, development environments, so you can leave all of the development fields blank. So I told you this is really not as overwhelming as it looks. Um, all of this stuff can be blank. Just fill in the ones at the top here where it doesn't say dev um, for the key. Then for the token, you can grab the token from the same page, trello.com forward slash app hyphen key. Uh, right below the key is the section for token, and you can see here, generate a token. If I click on that, it'll open up another page. It's going to ask me uh, to uh, give access. It's basically asking for my permission uh, so that my bubble app can do stuff on my behalf within my Trello account. So I'm gonna hit allow. And you can see here in the upper right, I have my token. So I'm gonna copy this and I would paste this into all of the token paths. So now for every single field within the live fields, we don't need to worry about the development. Now they all have a value. So now you're set up and authorized to run these actions um, and have your bubble app connect to your actual Trello account. Okay, so once you have all of that set up, 
Uh, now you can start using this. So I'm going to go over to this design page. It's blank here. And let's say I want to um, display a list of my team boards. All right. So I'm going to grab a repeating group and just add this to the page. And type of content is going to be board. I'm just going to type that in and we're going to see get board. Okay. And I'm going to do get data from an external API as the data source because my Trello plugin is an external API. And we'll see get boards here as an option. And for the team ID, it needs uh, to know which team's boards you want because you could have multiple teams in your Trello account. Um, actually, I'm gonna go over to my Trello account here and I can see I have, this is my sample team. Um, but within my account, I could have multiple teams if I wanted. This is just one. So I want to look up the boards for this team only. So you can see that the plugin is asking for a team ID so that it knows which team to pull from. The team ID is the, it, you're going to find it here in the URL when you're on the team page. Also, when you create the team for the first time, um, you indicate uh, an ID for it as well. So if you save that somewhere in your application, then um, you'll be able to pull that back and display it or uh, enter it into the settings here because this does take a dynamic value. So I'm going to grab this here as my example. I'm just going to copy this, paste this there. Um, and now my data source is set up properly. I'm getting boards for this team. Now you can see that I don't have boards, so I'm going to create just a few. We'll do board one. I'm going to create um, three of them here. We'll go back to the team page. Board two. Okay, and board three. All right, view team page. So I have my three boards there and this repeating group, that's what I wanna display um, is the board info for all of my boards. So I'm gonna add a text to the repeating group cell. Okay, and this text is going to display the current cells board, get board is the name of the call. And here's all of the information about a board that I can display. So there's the name. This will be the board one, two, or three. Um, but if I just go back so you can see what else you have access to, you can access the board's description, whether it's closed or not, um, the ID of the organization. This refers to team. Um, Trello's API uh, is not using the, <laughs> the front end terminology that we see when we're talking about teams, we're talking about organizations. It's the same. Um, and a few other, a few other items here too. Then you, you also have the ID for the board itself, which is what you would need to get the lists within a board, right? It's going to be the same thing, just kind of one level down. If we want to retrieve um, the lists within a board, we need to provide the board's ID. Um, and so you could save this here. Uh, or you could call the API and just retrieve it through the API call uh, and not save it. It's up to you. Uh, and then you have a handful of different fields that you have access to, preferences, different labels, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to um, pause my video real quick, add in my keys so that I can preview the page and you can see my board information come up. All right, so I've entered in my keys. So now I'm going to preview the page and we should see just the names of my boards here. There we go, uh, pulling from my account. So that worked really well. So the same concept can be applied um, to a board's lists and a list's cards. Now let's try creating a board um, using an action provided by the plugin. So I'm going to add an input here so that I can name my board, my new board, uh, board name and a button next to it that will say create new board or, you know, create. And I'm gonna start edit a workflow from this button. Okay, and then I'm going to navigate down to the plugin actions and select create board. You can see I have all of my Trello actions here. So create board, and we have a few fields actually, and I'll add extra inputs on my page for them. The first one is the name of the board. 
So I will use the input that I have created, the input board's name value for the name of the new board. And then we need a description here for our board. Um, I didn't add this in when I was creating them manually, but you can certainly do this from your application if you wanted to as well. So I'm gonna use a multi-line input for my board description. So I will set the description to that value, multi-line input. And then we need the ID of the team so that we know which board um, this is going to be created under. Now, I do not have a reference to uh, which board I wanna, or which team I want this to be created. So uh, there's a few, few different ways you could do this. If you had multiple teams, you could create a repeating group of teams display their ID that way, or if the entire page that you're working on is referencing a specific team, then you can pull the data through the current pages team. Um, or if uh, this is always going to be added to the same team, then you can kind of uh, enter a static value here and the user doesn't have to do anything with that. Um, they don't need to provide it. You can just have it go to the same team every single time. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go back to my team page and copy this from the URL and just paste that in here. So every single new board is gonna to go to this team. And then as a follow-up action, I'm going to reset the inputs here, just so that the they all get cleared out after the user clicks this button and they can see that something has happened. So let's try it out. I'm going to refresh the page. All right, so I'm gonna enter in board four and then we'll do a description. This is just a test and we'll hit create. Okay, so it created it. We can see that the um, fields were um, cleared out. Now, if I refresh my page so that I can pull back the, uh, uh, renew the call to my uh, list of boards, you can see now that this is added. Uh, we have everything updated there. So if I go over to my team page here and refresh the page as well, we should see our new fourth board that was created via the plugin and there it is board four and if i click on it i should see my description uh let's see about this board there's my description this is just a test all right so that is how uh, you want to go about adding things to the trello account and also retrieving stuff back it's all about um uh knowing which id to use for the team then the board then uh, you know, the list ID for a board so that you can add cards to a specific list. You can see that I actually have three lists that were automatically created uh, for this board. That's a setting that I've configured for my account overall, just to kind of have defaults there. Uh, but everything else will work the same way. If you have any questions about this plugin, you're welcome to post a comment below. Um, and if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. I do have many more in-depth tutorials about other plugins, integrations, and general how-tos uh, for features in your Bubble application within my VIP membership. There are details about how to become a VIP member in the description of this video. So check that out if you're not already a member. And thank you so much for watching as always.